Good morning, everybody. Doug Berry here. Welcome to the Sierra region of California and Nevada. Today, we're going to go hiking around Ryan Canyon, located in Mineral County. It should be fun. That's Mount Grant right there, 11,300 feet. To the right is Walker Lake. We're going up into those hills to the right up there. Ryan Canyon. These are weapons storage facilities bunkers, so I'm not going to film too much on that. I'm trying to keep the camera more on the road. We're heading right up into those mountains right there. Well, the road gets a little rough in here, but at least it's still paved. There used to be a little community right here, right where this old barn is still standing. And it's gone now, but the railroad tracks come through here and they move a lot of ordnance for the government in here on these railroad tracks. But after these nets said railroad tracks, it's a good road.
There's Walker Lake, Mount Grant. Storage bunkers, Army Depot. That square right in the left there, that's Hawthorne. This is Ryan Canyon. slow down in here a little bit. I've got highway tires on here, not four-wheel drive tires. And this is a little two-wheel drive highway truck, so these gravel roads are pretty rough on them. Well, this looks like a good place to park before we start our adventure this morning. Well, I wore out my hiking boots I got in Montana. I've had them for several years. It's starting to hurt my feet, so I stopped at JCPenney in Carson City and got myself a new pair. And today I'm going to bring this spotting scope. Get to lunch. Well, for my fitness program, I picked up some dead weights, and they're all 50 pounds a piece. I didn't realize that doing the deadlift is actually very a very beneficial exercise so I didn't know that so uh, I'm working on my exercise program and I'm trying to inspire everybody to stay fit and watch your health one of the best exercises we can all do is walk if you can walk you have a dog and you can walk but whatever you can do for instance I'm actually uh, a lot better on my bicycle than walking I can really move it doesn't bother my joints for some reason so whatever works for you and uh, I'm keeping it real too so I actually do lift weights I actually do run and everything I put in my videos is real this is who I am and I think some people sometimes they get jealous I know people can get jealous especially like if you have a, any kind of talent or something if you can sing or something that you make people mad if you're happy it makes people mad anyway so usually those people are unhappy so uh, but yeah I've been really uh, working on my exercise program. I'm not acting. I'm just who I am. I don't wear any makeup. I'm just I'm just being me. I can't be anybody else. So I hope that uh, I can inspire you to work on your health. So here I'm going to use a topographical map, and this is the Walker Lake, and that's the scale right there. And then if you notice on these topographical maps, right here. This is what we used to use in the Navy, too, for spotting for the Marines. Uh, Universal Transverse Mercator Grid, UTM. So it's got 16 degrees magnetic variation from true north. See that star right there in the declination diagram? Well, that's 16 degrees. You have to adjust your compass because that's how far magnetic north is away from true north. And that way you can cut bearings, and they'll be true bearings. I'll show you. you got to set it on your compass. So if you see right here... It's offset 16 degrees on my compass. And it's my little Ranger compass. And you can cut bearings. And you line it up and you can read it through the mirror. And then you write it down. And then you plot it on your map. You can see there's Hawthorne. It went up in here. And we're up in here. There's Walker Lake. 
So what you can do is then you spot like certain prominent mountain peaks. I think last time I was up here, yeah, I spotted this one right here uh, from Copper Mountain. Oh, Pilot Cone, Pilot Cone. And then I hit that and that was the bearing, 194 degrees true. And then I plotted it over here and I got two more bearings of two other different points. And then where those meet, that's where you are. So that's where it was the last time I was up here. So what I'm holding in my hand is not a compass, it's a pair of dividers. And I can use that to measure distance. On this chart, or I should say a map, the scale is one to 100,000 and the contour interval is 50 meters. But on all maps, a, mi uh, a mile is equal to one degree of latitude north and south. So you can use this border on the side to get your distance too. Now these contour intervals, which are in metric or meters on this map, indicate how steep the sides of the hills are, or the grades. So where they're close together, like here over in Copper Canyon, that's steep. And then where they're flat along the lake, that indicates that it's fairly flat. So this is a pair of dividers from I used to have on the ship when I used to help navigate the ship. And if I do like that, I've got it set for five miles. And then if I swing it out again, that's 10 miles. So we're roughly 10 miles from home in Hawthorne, up in here. There's Ryan Canyon. Right in there. The Gillis Range. At this point right there, elevation 2,000 meters or 6,000 feet. We're going to go two and a half miles west to here to 2,400 meters. And we're going to get a good view of the Walker Lake and surrounding area. I'm just going to bushwhack through this right up to the top of that hill there. So let me explain what I was talking about with doing uh, spotting for the Marine Corps when I was in the Navy. So let's pretend this is all water, the snow is water, and that my buck knife is the ship. And we're off the coast here. And then over here there's a mountain. And then here's some Marines. And there's some bad guys over here. And they call it Naval Gunfire Support. So we're trying to lob a shell over the top of that mountain, missing these Marines that are over here and hitting the bad guys over here. And so they're going to say uh, where they are, where the target is. And then when the ship shoots a shot, they're going to adjust the shot. And they're going to say, move this way or that way to get it 
on target. So that's what naval gunfire support is about. So I know there was a lot of outdoors people and some serious masculine manly men that really appreciate a good buck knife. And I just wanted to show how proud I am about this knife. I got it about 25 years ago from the custom shop. And if you notice it says BG-42 on the blade. That is a very unusual mixture of steel for a knife blade that's got some interesting metals in it that stays super sharp. So what I'm going to do is skirt right along that ridge, right over there, there. Well, up there on that mountain, I didn't get a whole lot of uh, extra footage coming back down because my battery ran out of juice. And whose fault was it? Mine. Yes, I was prepared. I brought this Mophie battery charger, which I hauled up to the top of that summit, and I left the charging cord in my truck. <laughs> I'm human. So it, it happens. So anyway, uh, but I brought this scope up there, and... I used to use this uh, to sight in my rifles. I had a hunting rifle, a 308 uh, Winchester, and uh, my buddy in Oregon, he bought a, I think it was a 300 Winchester. That's Tom. Hello, Tom. I hope you got your elk. Uh, but uh, when I lived in Oregon, in other places like Montana, there's a lot of elk around, and it's not about, it's not about being mean to animals. It's not about having low self-esteem and having to shoot something or whatever for hunting it's it's about uh getting fresh meat or if you live someplace where there's a lot of elk or deer i mean that's free protein and uh it helps on the grocery bill you just get a big chest freezer you just have to practice up and make sure that you harvest them uh humanely that that means getting a good clean shot anyway but i use this to uh take a look at hawthorne and i was able to see hawthorne at 13.4 miles away so we'll take a look at that couple of shots up there in the hill. Ladybugs up there at the summit on the Gillis Range, which is almost 8,000 feet in elevation. Uh, I had to do some research on that, and they're hibernating, but it's a special type of hibernation, and it's called diapause. Diapause. And what they do is they find a place to huddle together in mass to try to keep a little bit of uh, warmth with each other. And they'll try to find a little secluded spot. So I thought it was interesting that they would pick the very tippy top of an 8,000 foot peak and a rock pile. So apparently that rock pile is the warmest spot for a long way around. And they congregate up there. And uh, I found out that they also live one to two years. Those little insects live one to two years. And uh, they're our friends because they eat aphids, which uh, can plague all kinds of crops for farmers, can cut back on gains for um, certain types of crops for cattle and also they can attack your roses so the homeowners benefit from those too so they keep everything in check but it's amazing that they're up there just trying to keep warm on the very tippy top of peak there's another peak where i found another cluster of them on the top in a rock pile too so that was interesting I'm really enjoying this hike. 
and uh, it's really fitting into my new fitness program. And uh, the wind's starting to pick up on this ridge, so I'm gonna try to skirt along here. Definitely have to come back up there again. It's a great view of Walker Lake. Well, that was a good fun trip, good hike. It's about five hard miles. And there's Hawthorne, that dark spot in the valley there. And you can see a lot of those army bunkers there. And there's a dust storm over there, just below Mount Grant. Walker Lake. 